Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, uh, coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program, Digital Slide Review and Sign Out, is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with the Digital Pathology Association and Path Presenter, who collaborate to make this program possible. And that also makes it possible for you to review the digital slides that we use in this program uh, using the link that's in the description below. So uh, take a look at that. Uh, as we go along and keep that in mind. Uh, our case today comes from the realm of bone and soft tissue pathology. Uh, it's a nine-year-old girl who's developed some progressive pain and weakness in one extremity, uh, manifested as um, uh, uh, kind of uh, limping or alteration in gait that didn't seem to improve with rest uh, and so forth. So uh, needless to say, this led to some radiographs, uh, representative findings of which are uh, illustrated here. Uh, as you can see here on the left in the plane film, we have a lytic lesion with somewhat irregular boundaries. And you'll see a kind of a second shadow or two with some uh, destruction of the cortex here, uh, thinning of the cortex here. And uh, obviously a little bit of elevation in the periosteum as this gets a little fuzzy and hazy along here, uh, going along with that. <clears throat> and on the MRI, as you can see, it's isointense with uh, skeletal muscle. Uh, indicating that there's some tissue component to that. Um, it shows uh, brightness on the, this uh, other MRI image, and again, illustrates the architecture of variable uh, heterogeneity within the lesion, as well as this uh, <clears throat> uh, indentation into the cortex. And maybe you get a little sense of a little bit of highlighting of the periosteum, some extension here around this. So uh, looking at this lesion radiographically, this has the appearance of a potentially aggressive lesion. Note this uh, irregularity to the boundaries, the destruction and fuzziness, the elevation of the cortex and so forth. So what do we think about when we see a potentially aggressive or destructive bone lesion in a pediatric patient? Well, there's really five things that should come to mind in this category. Osteosarcoma, of course, the most common thing. Uh, Ewing sarcoma also can appear in this uh, age group. Lymphoma of bone certainly should be considered, although less frequent uh, in this age group. Uh, infection can be a cause for this sort of disorder. And then lastly, uh, one that uh, we don't see too often, but Langerhans cell histiocytosis can also have uh, isolated bone lesions and can cause some destruction of the cortex as well. So with that differential in mind, um, uh, each of those would require some degree of biopsy or evaluation. And so Biopsy was obtained with the frozen section evaluation to guide them as to what to do next. And this representative section shows a little bit of a cortical bone here with some permeation and destruction, variable uh, pale necrotic areas, uh, bluer, more cellular areas here. So let's look at one of the uh, bluer areas here. And as we uh, hone in on higher magnification, you can see how this is destroying the bone, eating away at it. We get a osteolytic giant cell uh, type of response here uh, with uh, blood, fibrin, and a mixture of inflammatory cells. So you might think, well, maybe this is going to be osteomyelitis. Uh, however, looking at uh, both uh, the cells in this uh, tissue, as well as what's uh, floating here in the um, sort of fluid surrounding it, you see there's a fair number of these uh, mononuclear cells, occasionally binucleate cells, uh, with a bit of eosinophilic cytoplasm, some sort of ovoid nuclei uh, here. And uh, on higher magnification, some of these uh, cells had nice uh, identifiable grooves in some of the nuclei. Here's maybe one right there. Uh, in addition, we see here there's quite a significant backdrop of eosinophils, uh, as you see here. Uh, not uh, neutrophils, no other inflammatory cells per se. So this is a nice suggestion that this may be what uh, was originally termed eosinophilic granuloma of bone, um, thinking that these cells were histiocytes uh, and the eosinophils represented a uh, partial response to uh, this granulomatous process. Uh, however, as uh, time has gone on, of course, we've recognized that this is not uh, indeed a granuloma per se. Uh, although these cells do exhibit some markers suggestive of histiocytes. Um, in fact, uh, they react nicely with CD1A, uh, which as you can see here, stains uh, the membranes. 
uh, and a little bit of the cytoplasm. And the cells in this uh, lesion are also uh, generally S100 positive, as you can see here. Well, this is not perhaps the best S100 stain that I've ever seen. Well, that uh, leaves us with a uh, diagnosis of uh, indeed Langerhans cell histiocytosis of bone or uh, eosinophil granuloma. Now, this is a lesion that's most common in childhood, um, but it can affect a variety of bones, including the skull, ribs, clavicle, scapulae, mandible, spine, various long bones, as in this uh, situation, the pelvic girdle, um, and so forth. Um, and it typically presents with pain and some degree of swelling or loss of mobility, uh, change in gait. Uh, occasionally, it may produce a, a degree of uh, postural deformity or, or kyphosis or so, scoliosis due to, to involvement of the spine uh, and this various uh, bracing and, and uh, so forth uh, destructive process that can occur in the spine. Now, the important thing to realize is that this is a lesion that can mimic more serious diseases on x-ray. So uh, that's usually going to lead to biopsy. Um, however, if it occurs in a long bone, it is important to note that it does not cross the epiphysis. Typically, it's hot on bone scan. Uh, and as we saw in our case, there may be a, a suggestion of a soft tissue mass uh, with MRI uh, scanning. So uh, here's an example of, uh, again, another destructive lesion, this one in the scapulae. Uh, and I think you can see here it's lytic. It's somewhat expansile. There's variability of uh, the uh, um, uh, mineralization around this area. Uh, the margins look fairly sharp, but yet there's some heterogeneity here that suggests it may have some degree of infiltration. Um, so just another example of... Uh, how this lesion can appear in a flat bone. Um, this is a clonal pr process. These Langerhans cells, as characterized by the Burbeck granule, uh, are, are positive or, or are, uh, are a neoplastic process. In fact, we recognize that they often have B BRAF, B600E mutations, uh, in fact, in over 50% of the cases. Um, however, other mutations, either in the ras -MAP -K, uh, uh, pathway, can also be seen, which are usually mutually exclusive. Now, I've highlighted for you the uh, CD1A positivity, the S100 positivity. Uh, if your lab has it, the uh, Langerin might also be positive. In general, this is a very limited-use antibody, so it's not widely available. Uh, I mentioned the Bur Burbeck granule, which is a sort of a tennis racket-shaped uh, structure that's seen on electron microscopy. This is rarely required any longer for diagnosis, um, but it has helped us to recognize that other diseases uh, with a somewhat similar histology, but uh, strikingly different uh, clinical presentation, uh, including letterer Siwi, hans schuler christian disease, Hashimoto-Pritzker disease, uh, all have this uh, same neoplastic uh, uh, component in common with uh, eosinophil granuloma of bone. Uh, the differences here are in uh, uh, less, lesser things in terms of prognosis, distribution, systemic versus um, localized, multiple bones versus single bones, and so forth. <clears throat> this lesion is also something that can occur in adults uh, in the lung, uh, where it is more typically associated with uh, smoking. Um, so uh, the pathology of this uh, process is uh, quite characteristic and uh, certainly interesting to find and come across, recognize it's a lot of fun, uh, but it's not necessarily a walk in the park in terms of uh, treatment and management. In fact, when we think about management options here, well, in, if it's a localized process, it's not destructive. Uh, observation occasionally has been advocated as sometimes these lesions will spontaneously regress. If you're producing a spinal deformity, it's difficult to operate. Occasionally, you can or sometimes bracing and so forth can be used to uh, uh, mitigate uh, that deformity. Radiation, chemotherapy, maybe with uh, vinblastine and steroids and so forth can be used at times, uh, or steroid injection has also been uh, found to be effective in some settings. Operatively, uh, the uh, process is usually curatage and bone grafting, uh, although here we want to be, of course, uh, mindful that we don't want to damage the articular uh, surfaces or risk of pathologic fracture. 
uh, and so other uh, modalities and more gingerly uh, methods may be required. Uh, many times the spinal deformity will mandate some form of surgical correction to uh, correct the, uh, the curvature issues that are involved there. Um, obviously, I'm not an orthopedic uh, surgeon, and uh, so I'm not going to comment further on that at this point. Just to be aware that those are some of the things that could happen following uh, this sort of diagnosis. So I've included here one additional lesion because this lesion is very common in the skull. Uh, this actually is a, a sample from the skull, which had uh, grown out into soft tissues. Uh, and again, helps us to uh, see uh, the variable morphology uh, as it may involve soft tissue. Here you see these sort of abscess-like extensions uh, of uh, mostly single cells uh, with uh, loose cohesiveness or no cohesiveness, uh, sprinkled uh, generously with uh, eosinophils in the backdrop. And here you can see a little bit more of the nuclear detail. This is not uh, colored by decalcification. You can see a few of these nuclear grooves, as you see here, uh, here, and so forth. Uh, and uh, to some degree, somewhat uh, demarcated cytoplasmic borders. Uh, higher NC ratios that would be considered uh, normal for usual histiocytes. Um, and uh, so therefore, a nice uh, additional morphologic example for you to study. Well, that uh, concludes today's case I wanted to share with you. Our final diagnosis is Langerhans cell histiocytosis of bone uh, arising in a long bone. A patient uh, will be uh, curate, curated and grafted and uh, followed uh, with uh, to indicate uh, what sort of response. We hope you enjoyed this program. And if you did, please uh, hit the like button. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at either, either of these locations. And as always, we do invite you to subscribe to the channel so that additional releases uh, can become uh, promptly uh, delivered to your inbox. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me.